What's going on guys? Today we are out on a huge lake in Manitoba and it's not Lake Winnipeg. It's actually another huge lake right next to Lake Winnipeg, Lake Manitoba. And the reason why we're on this lake is because like in all large lakes, the population of walleyes will cycle, it'll go up and down. And right now, according to our guide, Chris Chorney, <laughs> according, according to Chris, right now the population on Lake Manitoba is on the rise. Also another interesting thing about this lake is he says that he never catches walleyes deeper than 10 feet of water. What are we in right now, Brett? We just drilled a few holes. Yeah, anything from six to seven feet, which is uh, definitely a little different than uh, back home to be fishing in six feet. And if you do too big of a rip, you can feel your bait hit the bottom of the ice. <laughs> I think you're the bad luck, Brett. Can't even make up. Oh, there's a break that's about. It is a wall. Sweet. That is. That is a chunker. Look at that. Wow. Oh. That's an average fish. That's an average fish. Yeah, that's that's average. Look how thick that thing is. That's what I'm telling you, man. Holy cow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> flopper. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> they got a good, good attitude. They do. He crushed it. Wow. That's a pretty fish. That is a toad, dude. Sweet. First fish on the day. First wall dog on the day. I can't believe, look at the back. How thick that is. How'd she hit? Uh, it was teasing in and out on the graph for probably a minute, and then all of a sudden it just decided, okay, I'm hungry, and it shot up and thumped it. We didn't have anything break. I'm marking if this must be a bunch of bait. Yeah. Like the whole column? Yeah. yeah. This is insane. Ha. There's the bait. Okay, cool. We'll just pop this guy. I guess we're gonna use him for bait. Well, bread is a machine. Dude, never even graphed him. Six feet of water and I was just sitting here minding my own business and all of a sudden uh, went to jig and my rod tip stayed down where it was. God, these things are so healthy. Right in the top of the snoot. He's waving goodbye. We'll just keep rolling with it. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, dude. Sweet. So uh, fun in that shallow water. I think it's because you got the lucky hat. It, it's got to be. be. Nice and tight on that right there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hands off. No, you guys got sticky man. fingers. That's, that's the Lindner's angling edge toque, but I'm taking it off your head, Brett, for sure. We leave anything <laughs> laying around and it disappears in other people's tackle boxes around here. <laughs> Sketchy crew. What were you throwing? A big old PK, I believe this one's called a flutterfish. I honestly can't remember if that's the half ounce or the three quarter. Fishing it like a rattle bait. Obviously for a spoon, this thing is ridiculous. So doing big rips, that thing will kick five, six feet out to the side, even in shallow water. And then uh, if I graph a fish, I'll slow down and hop it, kind of get it to dance like that. But that one was just not even paying attention, just ripping. Did, did you have a salty on with that one? I, th I did originally, but I think it had fallen off by then. So that's, I guess, one reason little feathered treble is nice. Still gives it a little bit of a dangle for him to hone in on, so. Sweet, let's get some more. I like it. There's one. Oh, shoot. I don't know what the deal is. Are you really gonna set one? He's probably a whopping 12 feet away. In the good thing about the electric. That's. Oh, are you kidding me? That's a walleye, I think. 
you. Catch him. Try and do it. I've only hooked him twice. There we go. What in the world? Oh, let's see if you can see A few moments later. <laughs> All right, so dude, this was that was this was extremely interesting. What just happened here, Brett? I, I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> I will do my best to describe. So I was sitting there jigging with a big flutter spoon. I have a big mark come in. I set the hook. Snap. I'm all mad because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and that mark just drops back down to the bottom and it never left the graph. It just kind of stayed there in green. Uh, but some bait fish are coming through so it's kind of hard to tell if it's the same fish or not. But I grabbed my rod with a rattle bait on, dropped it down there, and that same mark that I was watching on my graph shot up. If I could get this out, that would be neat. Shot up and <laughs> crushed the rattle bait, but I do not see my spoon in its mouth. So I don't know if that's the same fish or if it was a school coming through because there was those bait fish flickering on the graph. But that was one of the most intense minutes of my life. I can't even believe that. Again, this is an average fish here and uh, it's about twice as thick as it should be. It looks really green. Yeah, it's green, man. And it's got like dang near tiger trout markings on the side. <laughs> They're so pretty. Cool. Unreal. And hey, they eat rattle baits here too. Spoiler <laughs> alert. That was my first drop with a rattle bait. It was madness. Awesome madness, but it was, it was madness. Yeah, well, the, the real takeaway here is that Brett now has three walleyes and nobody else has any walleyes. So, uh, yeah, that's an issue. I filled my bait puck full of minnows and I've not caught a walleye. So I don't know where they all went because my bait puck is almost empty. <laughs> Nick, you got any more minnows? I think, minnows think somebody's been <laughs> bumming some minnows. Just tearing through this bait puck with the zero fish I've caught. That's a big mark. Maybe it's not a big mark. Maybe there's like three small marks. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just one big mark and I missed him. It's okay. We're in Manitoba. It'll eat again. I feel like I should try the old metal bait down the other hole trick. I don't know how you jig with two rods at the same time. Oh no. My brain can't understand which one to set the hook on. Oh no! I almost got my first ever dueling rod fish. Now what? I feel like if I just focused on the one, I would catch this fish again. Are you kidding me? I missed him again. Fish this rattle bait, dude. You gotta drop it down a couple more feet. Oh my god, I just missed him again. How many times can you miss the same fish and it still eats? The oh. answer in Minnesota is zero. Zero, <laughs> yeah. Was that him? Yeah. He's just skirting around. No way on the rattle bait! Oh! 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 What in the world? You just had to come take it out of my hole. The only way, <laughs> the only way that I can actually, fish, man. the only way that I can actually catch a fish is if I steal Brett's rod. <laughs> You're more than welcome to you anytime. Oh, Check out good. this chunker. Holy cow. On the rattle baits. Can you probably believe it? Part. Sweet. They're, These are toads. These things are absolutely They're so stacked. thick. Three, four pounders is what the average is. Like, why does this thing want to bite a bait? Like, is it not right. pulling up? So I'm not going to lie. I think that was the first ever walleye that I've ever caught on a rattle bait. And if there's one thing that I learned fishing today is that the first thing you do is you figure out where Brett is fishing and you move in as close as possible. And then after that, uh, you drill a hole right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that... <laughs> Get the hot hole, man! Get the hot hole! So you jig next to Brett for a little bit, and if that doesn't work, you need to sneak up behind him and grab his rod and actually use his rod in his own hole. 
That's the that's that is the absolute optimal strategy. What is this? That is like the definition of getting hot hold. I, I'm surprised we don't fall through right now because there's a ring of holes around my sled. And last time we cut a ring of holes, I almost did go through. Oh gosh. No, that that was so awkward though. Like I came up, I came up and started jigging. And I knew that I was gonna steal that fish from Brad <laughs> because I, I gave it like a little extra rattle to try and attract them, you know. When did it bite? I I was trying to focus on myself catching the fish and not you. So did it bite when you were ripping or were you slowing down? Yeah. So like I gave it like the hard rip, rip, rip. Um, but then I did slow it down and do the buck and bronco, the, old the famous Aaron Weeb buck and bronco. Doctor Weebles. Doctor Weebles. Oh. What? Dude, I don't know what happened. I never let off on it and it pops off. What happened? Did you even mark it? No, well, yeah, for like a half a second. How do I keep on missing fish? Oh, he's back. He's back. Here we go, just keep going. Uh, no! What in the world? There he goes again. That was a good one, like 21 inches or so. Oh! Oh, oh Brett's, Brett's got one! Brett's got one, yeah, they're just starting. Brett! On the dead stick! Baby, baby! Oh, killing it! <laughs> Yo, Broadback! Sick. Look at that angry elf. Oh, that is That's a like pretty, a weapon. pretty one. You think they'd let us cross the border with this? <laughs> or board a plane? Lethal weapon. That spoon is so pretty, too. What's that one? That's literally called the clam. It's called the peg spoon by clam. Named the peg, after. as in like Winnipeg. <laughs> Big, fluttery, buttery, good looking thing. And I guess it works over next door, too. <laughs> Razorback. That is insanely beautiful. I got one, finally! Top side! Yes! Success! Success! Great success! success. Oh, that's a big one. Nice fish, that's man. That's a really big one, dude. That yeah! That be a little buttery, fluttery spoon. Look at that there, yeah. A little bit of glow in the dark and Sweet. no more glow. Cheap birdie, man. That's nice. They're nice fish. How'd punch, punch she go, Eric? Look at that. Well, she slammed it, just like all the other ones that I instantly released. <laughs> <laughs> and this one I got top size, so that's a... Uh, that's a happy ending knock, right there. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. This is the first one today that isn't perky. Okay. Wow. Well, of course, I catch the lazy one. But <laughs> <laughs> put that back. Look how chunky they are. Like, that is the average. Isn't that crazy? Holy We're cow. We're talking three, like, you hold them in your hands. That's Ridiculous three, four pounds. Average. Wow. Back in there. All right. Dude, success. Awesome. Sweet job, job man. All right, man. Uh, it's like almost five o'clock right now. We're losing quite a bit of light. And I don't think we're going to be out here a whole lot longer. Uh, Eric, our buddy Eric Labopa has some stuff lined up for us to do in Winnipeg tonight. A uh, little fishing podcast. So we're going to fish hard for probably another 20 minutes. Apparently the bite out here actually gets better and better as you get later into the evening and in, into the, the few first few hours of the night. So unfortunately I think we're going to miss out on that bite. It's always cool checking out a lake you've never fished before. And I for sure want to thank Chris Cherney for showing us around. Um, he's been showing us pictures of all the, the walleyes he's been catching and put us on some sweet ones himself here. So make sure to check him out. His uh, Instagram has got some super sweet photos of big walleyes and, and burbots from out here. Definitely worth a peek. But yeah, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe down below. And until next time, peace out.